This is Dan York, and I'm here today with Thomas Howe, who is uh, the king of the voice mashups. So, Thomas, uh, could you give folks a little bit of a background of what you are, what you do? Yeah, sure. Um, I write uh, voice mashups, which are applications that take voice and use it to solve other applications. I usually do that for large enterprise, um, for business process enablement work. Right, and you've actually written some on Voxeo's platform. Absolutely, right. Yeah. So Talk about the kind of mashups, or what are you doing these days? Sure. Uh, so what I'm doing mostly is half of my life is involved with taking um, a business problem and using voice to, to solve that business problem better. Uh, for instance, um, I'm working on a project for a large pharmaceutical that is doing a um, patient diary so that when uh, during a drug trial, they, the people who are involved in the trial will call uh, a phone to record any side effects they might have or just you know, their day-to-day -day diary. That way, the company that's running the drug trial can get their information quicker, more accurately, and if there's no information being recorded, they can find that out sooner, um, so they can call up the, the person in the trial and say, you know, we need some feedback on what's happening. So I'd write that software and, and I'd use Voxeo to handle the, um, the voice form part of that application. What kind of applications are people asking you to write these days? Uh, it hasn't. A lot of it is... Um, in the automation space uh, where we, there's a re repeated task that needs to be done with higher quality or with, um, with, with a less expensive alternative. Uh, for instance, I wrote a uh, password reset application for Perot Systems in Texas and for that application um, they wanted to uh, replace uh, some of their uh, workers on the help desk but at the same time by replacing their current process with a voice enabled process they're able to ensure the quality of their um, of, of the process, making it more safe and secure. So with that application, you know, you talk about com business enabling communication processes. Mm -hmm. Can you expand a bit upon that? Yeah, sure. So um, it, it so happens that when you're looking at business processes and trying to figure out how to make them run faster or better or give them functionality they don't have, uh, voice is a very unique um, and effective way of doing, um, of doing that. And what's happened recently in the last five years for sure, is the ability to, to uh, blend voice into those applications is much, much easier. So uh, as, using Voxeo as an example, I'm able to write uh, a customer survey application, load it up onto the Voxeo servers, and have it uh, running and, and tested you know, in a day. And that wasn't in any way possible five years ago, and especially not on a carrier class, highly scalable system. Now, now that we can do that, we can say to ourselves, okay, how do we use voice in, in, in really interesting ways? And so the, the ways that, which are coming out now are, as I said, automation. Um, uh, if I want to uh, consistently disseminate data, if I want to consistently c collect data, uh, as an example, imagine that you're doing an emergency services application and you want some way of collecting um, information from the NGOs and the citizens and the fire departments and the police departments on the street. Uh, by using voice as their primary interface, you're able to collect that information, aggregate it, bring it to the people who need to dispatch it in a way in which no other technology can do. Now, a mashup typically involves connections to other services and other items. Right. How are you typically connecting? What kind of interfaces are you using? What kind of APIs? Those type yeah, of things. So, so, uh, so, what, so the word mashup um, uh, really refers to applications that take their functionality from more than one source and typically using web services or some, uh, uh, some uh, REST or SOAP API that um, exists on multiple platforms. So uh, what would usually happen is we'd have um, one uh, uh, application that would be the mashup that would connect these services together, be running on some web, service out on the web server out on the network, and then it makes uh, direct calls into the Voxeo system to kick off voice events or to respond to voice events coming from the Voxeo's network. And then if it were a geolocation application, use that information plus Google Maps to display that in interesting ways to the people who want to see it. Now, you're also a blogger and uh, you've been blogging about uh, voice over IP issues. Kind of what trends are you seeing in the larger industry? Yeah, yeah, this is, um, I, yeah, this is like a really exciting time to be uh, in our field because you know, 10 years ago, we really thought that um, putting voice over IP would be the real killer application. But as it turns out, 
all we did was replicate the PSTN. The, 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 the real thing which is happening now is uh, we, we've been able to break down the barriers to create applications that, that integrate more than voice, everything together, um, in a very structured, scalable, safe way. So w what's happening in voice, voice over IP and communications is we're moving from the siloed application where the, the primary platform was a box by Nortel or Alcatel or there was some switch that was the primary place where things were done into a place where um, the internet itself is the platform and what that does is not only does it make it uh, easier for us to write voice applications but it makes it easier for other applications to include voice which is really fantastic. Yeah, we're, I keep talking about the cloud computing side of things and yeah. pushing voice out into the cloud. Yeah. yeah. So, so what's next for you? What are you? What's your next projects or major things you're yeah, doing? Yeah. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> I just announced um, uh, an example application for a Ruby library called Adhesion. Um, that was just here at the show. Um, and now, in the next uh, four to eight weeks, um, I'm working on on an example of what Martin Geddes calls uh, a two-sided. Um, business model service, it's going to be uh, what I hope to be the representation of where voice APIs are going. Because today there are lots of voice APIs, but they tend to be um, uh, very, uh, very similar and, and don't really take, take um, uh, uh, advantage of all the great Web 2.0 things you can do with voice. And so um, I'll be doing a couple example applications uh, at the Telco 2.0 show in November. I hope to have it ready. You know, cross my fingers. Um, and, uh, and it, it'll be an example of where I believe carriers will be going in the long run in terms of APIs. And where is that? Uh, it's in London, I hope. Oh, I mean, where are carriers going? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> where, where are they going? Well, you know, um, uh, the Telco 2 show that, that the, the you know, STL sponsors uh, is looking at how do carriers make money in an all IP world. So if, if, if everything's over IP and you can't charge for transport, how do carriers make money? And so they're working on business models that, that, uh, um, that might work for the carriers. And so <clears throat> one of their ideas, which is brilliant, is um, the, the idea of instead of having one side of the, their equation subsidize the other, for instance, um, if you're a, a TV watcher, your TV watching is subsidized by the advertisers. Um, you can create new services where uh, both sides pay for the privilege. And a great example of that would be uh, you are calling 411 for information. And so you as a mobile carrier are spending a dollar to get the information. Well, uh, the carriers can juice that offering by then turning around to the business side and saying, listen, if someone's asking for a pizza joint in Chicago, I will mention you first, but you're going to have to pay for that. So by going to the, both the businesses for, for a priority listing, they're able to get money from the businesses as well. So both sides of the equation are um, are subsidizing it, and there are there are a lot of cases where um, uh, where that works very well for carriers, um, specifically in um, logistics, information, uh, stuff like that. So I'm going to be working on a couple of examples of applications that could could represent what uh, a carrier could do. Pulling that all out all through various different APIs. Yeah. So how do people find out more about you or read your blog, etc.? Yeah, I'm at thomashow.com. Uh, and I uh, regularly contribute to Fierce Wireless um, and Programmable Web. And uh, I think I owe John an article now that I think about that. Um, but uh, I'd, I'd love for people to read what I do. Um, it's always pleases me. All right. Well, thanks for your time, Thomas. Cool thing. Thanks.